City of mine How I love, how I love The city of mine It never gets me down City of mine How I love, how I love The city of mine It never gets me Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel that is about human psychology and life in general. Today we're going to talk about communication. I'm actually going to tell you how you can communicate in a better manner with friends, families and co-workers. So come along, let's get cracking! In order for you to become a better communicator, you in fact have to start to actively listen to the other person. That means that you need to be quiet, not think about what you're going to say, but to focus on the other person and what they are saying. Why is this, this important? Well, to be construed or seen as a good empathetic person, because that is empathetic, you need to actively listen to what another person is saying so that you show that you understand that person. So when you think about yourself during a conversation and what you're going to say next, that is not a good way of communicating. You need to leave that behind and start focusing on the other person or the other people in the room. So how do you do this? Well, there are actually three things that you need to know before you start even considering actively listening. And you need to understand the different ways of communicating. There are basically three ways of communicating. One, a dialogue. In a dialogue, two people that are communicating are not trying to win. No, none of the parties wants to wi win the argument or the communication. Rather, you exchange information and ideas, value them neutrally, and don't try to win, win the other par person's approval of what you're saying. So the dialogue is the preferred way of communicating with others. But here's the problem. Since you have a personality and the other person has their personality, that dialogue can easily be kicked into something that you all know about. It's called a discussion. In a discussion or a debate, one or both party wants to win. And that's where the trick is that emotion plays a big part in a discussion. And thirdly, when a discussion gets really heated up and you trigger the, the opponent, that gets kicked into a heated argument where there's only casualties and both party loses. We all know about that. So why is it that we go from the perfect scenario of a dialogue into the argument and then into a heated argument? Well, I'll tell you why. So why is it important to understand that personalities do play a huge part in the way we communicate? Together with your values and the culture that you've been brought up in and that you live in. So let's go through the different traits of personality types and which ones are better than others and well, which are worse when it comes to uh, communicating. So when we talk about communication, it's important to understand that personalities plays a huge role in the way two people are communicating with each other. And if you take in a third party or a fourth party, you can really start to understand how complex it is and how hard it is to communicate in a good manner. On top of that, every single indiv individual is under the influence of their own value system. Either they are good or they are bad, just like yin and yang. And you actually behave differently during communication depending on what, what type of personality you have. 
So let's start off with the first one that you all know that I spoke about in the extraversion video. If you, for example, is high in, in extraversion like me, for example, it's pretty easy to communicate with me because I like to talk and it's easy to, to hear what I say. But on the other hand, I talk a lot. So for you to actually actively listen, you need to be able to listen actively and, and understand everything that I say. But on the contrary, when you're low in extroversion, you're an introvert, you don't say as much and you don't actually get the dopamine kick from talking to other people in a communica communicating way like I do. And I get a dopamine kick out of it. Introverts do not. Then we have the second trait, which is being agreeable. Communicating with an agreeable person is fairly easy because they agree with you. And that can be a good thing when, it, when we talk about sticking to the dialogue. But if the other person is disagreeable, that person will not compromise there. So you will have a trouble staying in a dialogue with a disagreeable person. You'll get easily kicked into something called the argument or the heated argument. Then we have the third one, which is conscientiousness. Conscientiousness is the ability to control your impulses. Impulses can also be sticking to a storyline and information that that is true. However, it's not that hard or problematic to be high in conscientiousness when we talk about communicating. It can actually be good because they stay on track during the dialogue or the argument. However, it's probably easier to talk to and communicate than with a low conscientiousness trait. They don't really care about staying on track and being on point. Fourthly, you have that neuroticism trait. And here's the big and problematic trait, personality trait, when it comes to actually communicating with other people. As I spoke in, in the um, narcissistic video that I did, based on science, uh, the neurotic people easily uh, get triggered into a negative emotion, especially when you're middle or high neuroticism. Inevitably, that will render you incapable of listening to the other party. And it doesn't really matter what the other person is saying because if you're triggered into a negative emotion you'll get into a, a, a situation that is called a refractory period and during that refractory period your brain is locked into only accessing memories and information that enhances the uh, negative emotion that you're currently experiencing the worst part is that most people also import more information from their memories that enhances their emotion that they're currently having. And then they will project that onto you when you try to communicate with them. And you can hear this fairly simple. If you have a dialogue with your spouse, for example, and you talk about something that triggers your spouse, you can go from saying something to the other person saying that why did you say that when in fact you didn't that's you triggering them into having an emotion and then they are stuck in that emotion and stuck in their memories and thought so they were thinking about what you said but in their head it sounded like something totally different and now they're projecting it back onto you as something you in fact said when in fact you didn't say it so that's a problem. Another huge problem when it comes to the neuroticism trait is your memory. And there's basically four types of memory. It's uh, short-term memory, your working memory, which is basically your IQ. Then you have your mezzanine memory, which is your middle memory. That is, what did you have for breakfast? Then you have your long-term memory, which is a memory where you repeat something and it gets stuck in your memory due to repetition, or you remember it over and over again, like uh, your childhood phone number in your house, for example. But the fourth memory, and the scary one, which is very 
important for you to understand. It's called light bulb memory. Light bulb memory is basically a memory that gets put into your brain during an emotion. For example, when you watched 9-11, the, the terrorists crashing into the two towers, you probably remember that day like nothing else. You can describe it like easily. But here's the thing. They did a, a, sci a science experiment on that particular day and they had students write about their emotions and their experience about the day and what happened. Three years after that, they did the same thing. And the students saw both papers, which were descriptions about what happened. They could see their description of 9-11 that they wrote the day of 9-11. And they could, without a doubt, say that, yes, I did in fact write that. But here's the tricky part. They also said, but that's not what happened. What I wrote today is what happened. 90% of what they wrote three years after 9-11 was inaccurate. But their perception and the belief that it is in fact what happened was so strong that they refused to accept that what they wrote on the day that it happened that's actually what happened. So that's a problem when we talk about neuroticism. If you store memories in your brain, and a memory is basically uh, fractions of what happens that your mind makes a coherent story about and then puts into your memory. And you can imagine how problematic this will be over the years if you're high neurotic neuroticism or middle when you store enough memories that in fact are based on light bulb memory, your view of the world will be totally inaccurate. But let's get back to the argument and the communication type. When, communi when communicating with other people, you can see how this will become very troublesome, especially in an intimate relationship where you actually have to base your relationship on trust, which in turn becomes love and that's what binds two people together. If one person is uh, heavily relying on memories based on emotion, those memories will not serve that relationship very well, um, which in turn will become very problematic. And lastly, we have openness to experience. Openness to experience is good to be high in when we talk about actively listening to another person. Because when you actively listen, you need to be able to access your lateral thinking, which is, I not only see the world from through my eyes, I'm also able to see it through your eyes and conceptualize in my brain how you might perceive this information that you're telling me that helps me to understand you and become more empathetic. On the other hand, a closed-minded person that have few interests in life and have a hard time seeing the world in a different perspective than their own will have a hard time actively listening to you and so will you if you're low in openness to experience. So how do you become an empathetic person that people actually value to be around and to have in a conversation when they feel the need to talk to someone? And how do you elevate your relationships, both private and work-related or friendship relationships? It's fairly easy to do actually, but in order to, for you to become an empathetic person, you need to stop focusing on what you're thinking and what you want to say in order to focus on the person that is talking and doing that 100%. There is a reason why you have two ears and one mouth, which means you should listen twice as much as talking. And that's a good rule to have or to follow. So basically what you do is you have to listen to everything the person is saying 
because when the person says they're done, you need to recap it verbally back to the person. And if that person tells you that, no, that's not what I said or what I meant, you need to ask again, so what did you mean? And then you need to recap again until you are 100% right that, and that the other person accepts that, yes, that is what I mean. Only then you're finished, but not quite finished. Because you also need to say, this is also how you feel. And you also need to get that right. Because a person is not, not just words, they're also feelings. That makes us human. So when you become accurate in recapping what the other person has said and is feeling about it, then it's your turn to talk to the person and tell them what you think and how you feel. This is a good way of getting connected to another person during a conversation or communication, especially making it stick to dialogue rather than kicking it up a notch to an argument or even the worst kind, the heated argument. I know it takes practice because everyone usually wants to uh, say what's on their mind but you need to practice on not doing that because it's simply not relevant and everything has its place and time and you can wait even if you wait to say your bit it doesn't really matter because you will get the time to say it it's very important that you let the other person speak their mind and have their say in it the way they want to say it. That keeps the communication calm, composed and making it stick to a dialogue, which is ultimately the best way of communicating with another person and not simply triggering, triggering the other person into some sort of emotion that will lead to retaliation that like I told you in the emotions video go and watch that if you want to know how emotions really work in humans and why you should really pay attention to emotions and the consequences of emotions well that's basically it for today I hope you liked it uh, if you like it share it with others please write like write the comments uh, subscribe if you want more information about this, these types of topics. Hit the like button and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers everyone. Bye.